Now, we play with this, so we are talking about typical sequence, right? We play it with this, okay, we get uh, uh, dr a drive to AD, we press OK, okay? And the first thing we do, we uh, do, oh, I'm sorry, we do drive pre-configuration. And this is also, many people are missing that and, it, and, it's, uh, and it's bad. And again, it's actually in the user manual in typical sequence, but if you, if, you, if you want, you can write it down. So what drive pre-configuration does, uh, it does certain vendor-specific things to disable non-critical subsystems on the drive. Non-critical systems. So like, for example, smart attributes. We know that smart attributes, well, you all know what it is, right? But uh, we don't need that smart subsystem to be enabled to image data, right? We need actually to disable it. Why? Because every single time when drive gets to that sector, it actually go to firmware area and update smart attributes because it gets one more bad sector, it may get, uh, add that sector to defects list, calculate some other stuff, so it's extra stress for the drive, right? Extra stress. And you may find drives that get, that, uh, that process and reset very long time just because of smart attributes is enabled. And drive pre-configuration, if I press it, uh, it's, uh, okay, it's, Turn off. Okay, disable smart operation. Well, it's skipped because I have already disabled it. Okay, so you see that it's actually disabling different things, uh, so that imaging process would be lighter. Okay, so we basically make an imaging process as light as possible. Yeah, yeah, it's express diagnostics and disk purpose is, is, is optional. You can do that, but, but usually if, uh, if drive IDs and gives access to data, it doesn't really matter what express diagnostics shows, okay, and what disk ID shows, because all we need at the end of all just to get image, right, just to get it done. And, uh, and sometimes express diagnostic also may just give you some confusing, you know, information, uh, which doesn't help anyway if, <laughs> if there is no access to data. <clears throat> okay, so about pre-configuration is, 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 is crucial. Okay, it's very important. And then, as I mentioned before, you go to, uh, you go and build heads map, right? That's, that's just, uh, uh, just a must do things. <clears throat> build heads map. Then do, as I already mentioned, do a media test, right? Just to get brief testing of each head. And if you identify that hat, you disable it. So you media test, and then you can start imaging. Only then. Okay, so that steps that I, I told you before, that kind of you must do them before you start imaging. <clears throat> and only when you start imaging, then you play with read sector timeout, right? And, and the block size. So that's, that actually is steps that, uh, that you do with every single drive. <clears throat> okay. okay, let me check if I missed anything. Any questions? On the media test, when you sometimes get a, you get a green box with a check underneath it, and some don't have a check, does that mean anything? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, on the, on the, on the media test, <clears throat> so this drive doesn't have any check marks, uh, which means that it doesn't have any data on it. So any check marks means there is some data within that sector. If, if there is no check mark, it means no data. No data means that all bytes are this, have the same value, for instance, all 0, 0, all FF, whatever, but no data. And, uh, and it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, uh, test. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because it will give you idea how much data the drive has, because drive is usually filled up from LBA0, right? And further, so on most drives, you will see check marks, check marks, and at some point, there, are, there will be no check marks. And you will see right away, okay, this drive has about 50% of data. Okay, very brief test, but right away you see, okay, or 75% or 20%. Okay, 
Okay, so so that you know you have you have an idea how much data your customer has on that drive. <clears throat> okay. Now, next thing that uh, that's important after you start playing, uh, so start imaging and play with read sector timeout and and block size, is uh, to uh, identify reset command that works better on your drive. There are a number of different reset commands that are available. The first possibility is to specify time, timeout reset procedure. And as you can see here in the configuration, it's either hardware reset or repower the drive recalibration or software reset. So the two things that you will always play with, hardware or software reset. The other options are very rarely used. So hardware software is set. So let, let's, let's try, for instance, uh, for, for this drive. If we have, uh, it's through the optimizations, right? I'm talking about through the optimization that you can do after read sector timeout and, and, and block size. Again, if, you, if we continue and see uh, what time it takes. OK, so we have uh, uh, six, about 600 milliseconds, right, delay. So it's not delay, it's a time that it took to process this block. And this time consists of what? It consists of 200 milliseconds of time while DDI was waiting for the drive to res respond and 600 minus 20, 200, which is 400 milliseconds to process reset, okay? Because we said 200 milliseconds, but as we can see, for some reason, it's 600 milliseconds. Why is 600 milliseconds when I said 200? Because it's 200 that DDI was waiting for response, and then send resend command, and then it took 400 milliseconds for the drive to get back to process reset, OK? So now we understand, OK, how we can optimize it further somehow try to minimize time required for the drive to process reset. Okay, and, and what are the options to try different resets? So this is, um, this is hardware reset. Now let's try, uh, uh, let's try software reset. Okay, press OK, start. And uh, what we have here, it will start. Okay, it's, it's, okay. Yeah, it's head three, it's okay. It's, yeah, it's four, four seconds, let me see. It's, is it really software is set? Yeah. Okay, so as we can see, software is set doesn't really work well for this drive, okay? So it's, uh, it's very unstable. Sometimes it's four seconds, sometimes it's 500 milliseconds, but it doesn't matter. So I would definitely not use software is set for this drive. But there are drives, that are processing uh, resets much faster when you use software reset. Software and hardware reset, it's, it's simply different type of reset. Software reset, it's a command that is sent to the drive. And hardware reset is specific uh, physical level command. On ID drive, it's basically just, just, a, just one of wire that is resetting the whole device, hardware, okay? So it's a reset button. Okay, physical button. <clears throat> and uh, so here we have only software or, or hardware reset options, but when it's, it's hardware reset, okay, let's get back again and see. <clears throat> yeah, so we have 600 milliseconds. And another option is to go and change type of hardware reset. So there is a, uh, actually ability in settings dialog there is ability to select either SATA COM reset, fire reset, or controller reset. <laughs> okay, so by default is uh, SATA COM reset, but let's let's try to have to have fire reset. Uh, you don't have to understand what it is. Just, just you, you know, you, you can just play with it because <clears throat> your target is data, right? Not like physical architecture of the drive. So it, it works bad also, like it's one second and now the drive doesn't even respond. Okay, so I will, I will not play with it more, but I'm just giving you an idea. This is what you're playing with. So basically you have, what options you have? Software reset, 
right? And three types of hardware resets. So which basically means that it has uh, four different types of resets that you will always play, you know, if you want, you can always play with it, see which reset will take less time. Because again, the less time the reset takes, the less pressure the drive has. To get to, okay, uh, imaging process configuration where you actually like had this control I imaging, okay. So drive initialize procedure, which is not working here, is control N, as I mentioned, right. The main configuration is control C, is configuration, okay. This way, read read timeout, read time block, and uh, uh, control E for settings. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Okay, yeah, escape. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just cancel, just escape and it will stop imaging. So this is a stop. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I will back, get back to, yeah. because drive is doing something. And whatever it's doing is bad. Why is bad? Because whatever the drive is doing, if it's not resulting with data, it's bad. It doesn't matter what it does. You know, it takes time, it's doing something. You know, it's resetting. It's usually doing reset, it goes to so-called system area, to the firmware, updating something, reading something, you know, doing something. But whatever it's doing, uh, it doesn't lead to what we need it to do, right? Yeah, all we need it to do just to get back from, you know, to, to, to read the next read block command, right? So that's why the less time it takes, the lighter it is. Because we don't want, ideally, we don't want the drive to reset, right? Ideally, we should say, okay, you're doing something, don't do whatever you do, and start doing the next. But it cannot do that. It, it just has to reset something, you know, state, right? Yeah, get, 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 get back to normal, okay? It has to get back to normal, whatever, whatever, wherever we interrupted it, okay? It was doing something. <clears throat> okay, so reset. Right. This is optimization. This is the next thing that you you uh, use to optimize uh, your imaging. So the next thing that you can try to do is um, uh, use different read uh, read procedure. So read procedure as we have, we have standard read, uh, and we re we have read ignoring ECC. Okay. For for USB, we have. ATA USB read command also. <clears throat> uh, read ignoring ECC, uh, we don't have time to explain you know, what it is, but basically this is reading uh, data from, from corrupted sectors. Okay? If sectors is corrupted, the last resort would be to try to read uh, by read ignoring ECC commands, uh, which means that uh, the drive will not uh, use checksum to validate the data of, of the sector, okay? And return you whatever, whatever is there without validating it, okay? It's very rarely work for modern drive. For all the drives, uh, it, it worked well on certain drives. So basically when checksum doesn't work, but you can still get uh, original data, okay? And you can uh, read my white paper to understand why is that and, and uh, we don't have time for this now. And another thing that uh, also modify read command is um, <clears throat> uh, instruct the drive to use internal read retries. Also worked on some older drives for newer drives uh, works not so well. And uh, the last is forced to use PIO mode instead of UDMA mode. So all these options may lead to different results when you read uh, sectors, when you read blocks. So one command may, in other words, one command may uh, get you more green blocks than the other, okay? Because before that, we were just thinking about how to optimizing bad blocks, right? Problematic areas, but different read commands may get to different results at all. 
Like uh, what I mean is that let's say uh, bad sectors now apparently becoming good sectors. It could happen. Because different read commands execute different procedure within the drive to read that sector. Okay? So it's a different procedure. I'm, I'm trying to prioritize what's important, what's not. So this is, this is quite rare when it's working, but it's still worth to try in some cases. Okay? So all the steps that I'm showing you, uh, like uh, only two are critical, the rest are kind of just fraud optimizations, but you can still play with it, but they're optional. Okay. <clears throat>